Howdy folks, welcome back to the Steampunk Test Router channel. You know, some people call me the Space Cowboy. Some people call me the Gangster of Love. But nobody calls me Maurice and it ain't my name, so don't call me that. Now that silliness aside, the topic of this week is Space Cowboys, or more correctly, Sci-Fi Cowboys. Now, why is this significant? Well, I tell you, because sci-fi westerns were once taboo. Because 70 odd years ago, a sci-fi magazine called Galaxy ran an ad that humorously rejected the concept of sci-fi westerns. I mean, basically they were crap. And they made up this story of a sheriff called Bat Durston on the moon who's gonna face off with a villain. <laughs> And it's basically a story with no substance. That's the that's their point. You know, it's it's just it's all show, it's all stereotypes, and that's why you'll never see a story like this in Galaxy. The upshot was that you really didn't see a lot of this in you know novels and short stories. It almost became taboo until you know later on in the in the nineteen. 90s in particular, uh, when they started to do a lot of movies that were essentially uh, sci-fi westerns, and uh, it changed. So that's basically why I'm talking about this, because the Space Cowboy has, like it or not, become an important part of the genre. <laughs> As I said, uh, the space western was kind of taboo. And the cool thing is that Hollywood screenwriters, they didn't care. <laughs> they were going to write whatever made them money. And so they came out with crazy projects like Cowboys and Aliens, for example. And so I think that kind of saved the space western, the sci-fi western, from annihilation. And eventually it became respectable again. I did a survey a year or two ago. I was going to do a show on sci-fi westerns, and I still may do that in general, but today's show is a little bit more specialized. And I read a number of novels and kind of made a list, and I noticed that there was three kinds of sci-fi westerns, roughly speaking. Uh, the first is science fiction set in the historical past, usually in the American West. Uh, it's the history, but transformed by circumstances such as technology, as anachronistic, or the intrusion of some novel elements such as magic or alien invasion. Again, Cowboys and Aliens. And now much of this is steampunk. And there's some pretty cool stuff in that genre. But, you know, for quite some time that didn't exist. Examples of this include the archetypal steampunk, the TV series The Wild Wild West, back in the 1960s. And later on, I believe it was the early 90s, Briscoe County Jr., which was, was humorous and pretty funny and pretty cool. Number two is the Western style storyline transported to the future or to outer space. So we have frontier elements. We have good versus ethel. We have the heroic uh, issue. Uh, you know, we have, you know, basically conflict between kind of a black and white idea, usually. Um, the best example of this, I think, is the series Firefly. And it's not entirely black and white, but in general, uh, the heroes of the show are good people. And you know, a few decades ago, there was a movie called Westworld based on a book about a Western theme park uh, in the near future that kind of went berserk. I mean, some of the robots kind of started thinking for themselves. And it was a f interesting movie, and later on they made it a series. Number three, and the one I'm focusing on today, is the Space Cowboy or the Sci-Fi Cowboy. Best example of that is the famed anime Cowboy Bebop, which I will talk about later. Absolutely, one of my absolute favorites. This is about the cowboy as hero, as archetypal hero, as a rugged individualist, the flawed but dauntless crusader. This goes beyond what the historical West was, really, and more into the philosophy that drives the American Western. The cowboy is not 
just a cattle rancher or a, or a cow puncher that drives the cows from Texas to Montana and back. No, it's about, again, about a hero. It's about the rough and tumble life in the wilderness against the harsh environment. The cowboy is an incarnation of the lone male hero, uh, kind of like the medieval knight or the samurai of Japan, and in particular the ronin, you know, the masterless samurai. The modern woke world, in my view, hates the cowboy because it hates heroism. And it, it really hates the fact that these cowboy heroes are all men. And, you know, the action, the good versus evil, the, you can't have that. And you can't say anything good about America's past, which is something I take issue with. Sorry, folks, I do. Now, the sci-fi cowboy seldom has anything to do with cattle or, or livestock. It's more about the cowboy hero. He's often a lawman. He's sometimes a bounty hunter. Sometimes he's a lone citizen who rescues the innocent or stands up against injustice. He can be a pioneer in hostile country. Occasionally it reverses, and he is the anti-hero. He is an outlaw who nonetheless has some kind of nobility, some kind of redeeming qualities, uh, perhaps because he plays a Robin Hood role, or, you know, is in some way a gentleman villain, kind of like Jesse James. I have to throw in a personal story here. Mrs. Desperado, my dear wife, tells a story of how her family came in contact with the famed James brothers, Jesse and Frank. Now, they had a farm, the Holloway family. They had a farm out in Oklahoma, and it was a tough life, you know. And these two cowboys come in. This is somewhere in the 1800s. So it's her great, great, or great, great, great grandparents. And these guys come in and the family realize, oh my God, it's Jesse and Frank. Now, I don't know if they sympathized. A lot of little people did. In any case, they couldn't say no. So they fed them supper and they let them feed and water their horses. And then they were on their way. Now, the story is that the James brothers were very polite and, you know, never made any overt threats, uh, and that when they were gone, after the women had cleaned up, they noticed that under every plate, because the plates were left set on the table, probably because they had no cabinets and only had one set of dishes, and underneath each plate was a silver dollar. Now, assuming there were like 10 place settings, that's $10, which was a lot of a tip in those days. <laughs> So just kind of a cool story about these uh, gentlemen villains and definitely cowboys. Now, this illustrates the fact, though, that the cowboy was rarely an actual loner. Usually he had at least one partner and sometimes several. Sometimes he was a part of a small gang, you know, like the James and the Youngers, for example. And um, or maybe he was a lawman with a, a deputy or a small posse. Some of those examples, uh, indeed, we have to start with Cowboy Bebop. Uh, again, uh, a, an anime based on a manga, 1998 to 99, one of the most beloved animes ever. Uh, the creator is supposedly Hajime Matate, which is actually a pseudonym for the Sunrise Animation staff, and it's based on a, a manga that was out the year before, in uh, the monthly Asuka Fantasy DX magazine. <laughs> you can't make this up. And it, you know, just such a short-running thing, and yet it was so popular. The characters are Spike Spiegel and Jet Black, and they are interplanetary bounty hunters. Yes, the bounty hunter theme. And bounty hunters are referred to as cowboys in this series. The protagonists, Spike and Jet, are partners who prefer to work by themselves only. A two-man team, and they unwittingly pick up extra crew for their spaceship along the way, including the sexy but dangerous female bounty hunter, Faye Valentine, uh, the strange little girl, Edward, <laughs> who seems a little confused that they pick up from Earth, but she's brilliant, and uh, finally, the corgi, Ein the Data Dog. <laughs> anyway, anyway, as you can see, there's already a female sidekick in here, and that's going to be a theme. You know, they may have a man as the leader, in this case two men, but there is a woman involved and a girl. 
Second one, we're going to hark back to cyberpunk in the most famous, the most beloved uh, founding cyberpunk novel of all time, Neuromancer by William Gibson, 1984. In this case, we have an anti-hero, Henry Case. He's a washed up hacker and drug addict who is hired for one last job. He wants to get out of this business. He wants to redeem himself. <laughs> And hackers are known as console cowboys. Uh, so they're kind of lone desperados, hmm, kind of like me. And he has a female sidekick. Surprise, surprise. She is called Molly Millions. She is a deadly assassin. Sexy but deadly, kind of like Faye Valentine. And there are a couple other men who are kind of psychos and sadists that are in with his team. But the whole idea is to you know, get this uh, information. Uh, they have, need to get this information from this kind of sinister uh, corporation uh, that is up to no good. And so they are heroes of a sort. Number three is also a cyberpunk. It's a novel that I made fun of in the most recent uh, show about world building because some of the premise was stupid. But still, the hero is pretty much an archetypal cowboy. In fact, he's called Cowboy. He is a fighter pilot turned smuggler. And with, he's got cybernetic implants, which is why the novel is called Hardwired. And it's by Walter John Williams, 1986. He has a partner in crime who is a woman. Once again, Sarah, a prostitute turned assassin. And they're doing a job for a shadowy Russian businessman or mafia boss or something but they're going to get medicine from one coast to the other uh, which is kind of a heroic job supposedly at least they think it is and so it's a it's an actiony story kind of a weird premise but definitely a sci-fi cowboy number four i have to go back to the present or near past the mandalorian yes that Star Wars spinoff, probably the only series that was well received because it was kind of more in the old vein of a heroic character and not so much, you know, woke identity politics in there. No, he was he was just a man doing a job. Now, we call him Mando because he is a Mandalorian, which is a kind of a cult that uh, is bounty hunters. You know, they're kind of this this secret society or semi-secret society. They all hide their faces under masks or helmets, as does Mando. He's, I guess his real name is Din Djarin, um, but he's a good guy, and he ends up caring for this unusual alien child called Grogu, who people call Baby Yoda because it looks just like the Yoda character from earlier Star Wars. And so he teams up with a lot of different people along the way, including a couple of women. Hmm like Mercenary Cara Dune, one of my favorites. And again, his his fellow Mandalorian, uh, Bo-Katan, but she has been radicalized and she doesn't cover her face, which is shocking. <laughs> and that's Katie Sackhoff from the uh, Battlestar Galactica reboot. And so, you know, a lot of fans of hers out there. So a lot of guys were excited that she was in this. But again, he's kind of a Western character. He's kind of roaming the frontier, even if it was the space frontier. Of course, I have to talk about Firefly. I cited this as a number two space Western, but it's really also a number three because we have the cowboy hero, Captain Malcolm Reynolds, who is a war veteran from a failed cause. And indeed, many Western heroes are Confederate veterans, so they're kind of disgruntled from the losing side. And he is a cargo hauler, he's a smuggler, and an occasional thief in a hostile system. Now, his, his uh, sidekick is also a woman. And this is his fellow veteran, Zoe Elaine, who was at the Battle of Serenity Valley with him, and that's why they named their ship Serenity. And Mal has this crew that he picks up, and uh, they're very tightly knit, although they often squabble. And they are doing jobs, and they're trying to do some good. <laughs> they're trying to do some good as they go along, and you know, trying to make the best of it. So very, very Western in its themes, and kind of frontierish in the setting. 
Here's one I have to mention because it's often referred to as high noon in space. It's probably the most true to the Western archetype, and this is Outland, 1981 Warner Brothers movie starring Sean Connery as Federal Marshal William O'Neill. Now, this does not take place in America or any time in the near future. It's a far future show in which uh, humans have settled the moons of Jupiter, and they've got mines there, titanium mines to be specific, and there is a crisis over there. Some of the miners are going psycho, and he's sent to investigate. Well, it turns out there is a drug ring there, uh, peddling dangerous narcotics that are causing this problem, and uh, O'Neill has to face down these very ruthless men all on his lonesome, as in High Noon. So it's very, very cowboyish. Here's one that doesn't often get cited as a space western, but I will call it that. Uh, the Expanse, which is novels by James S. A. Corey, which is a pseudonym for two guys, Daniel Abraham and Ty Frank. The novel started in 2011, and there was a bunch of them. And the series was begun on streaming series. I think it was sci-fi and picked up by Amazon, perhaps, if I remember correctly. Uh, Mark Fergus and Hank Osp started in 2015 and this is far future the solar system has been settled by humans and they are everywhere on earth mars and in the asteroid belt in the moons of jupiter etc and it's not all cowboyish but i would say that the cowboy hero in this one is james holden a former navy pilot un navy that is and his again female sidekick naomi nagata she's from the asteroid belt She's kind of a firecracker type. And my favorite character, however, is the Martian-born pilot, Alex Kamal, a gung-ho Arab Texan. <laughs> At least he sounds like a Texan, and he's got all these Texas-type uh, affectations. And Because Mars is kind of a militaristic, uh, very Western-style civilization. Unlike the Serenity, you know, his crew has kind of gotten into this accidentally. He was on an ice freighter called the Canterbury, but it was destroyed by unknown forces. They, the survivors, end up stealing a Martian military ship, and they rename it the Masonanti, the Rossinanti, after Don Quixote's horse, and they're going around trying to solve the mystery of what the heck is going on with the solar system. What is this sinister force ha happening? And there's all sorts of other themes. You know, there's a noir detective theme, and, and uh, you know, there's a kind of a bit of a horror theme going on as well. So it's very mismoshed, but I definitely think we have a space western in there too. I have to give a shout out to a particular uh, steampunk, which again is a sci-fi western. Uh, my fellow southwesterner and acquaintance from sci-fi cons, David Lee Summers, he has a series called Clockwork Legion. I did a particular show about this a couple years ago. Uh, the series was started in 2011 and he wrote some more books starting in 2022 uh, which i really loved uh, starts with owl dance and i love it as a western because the hero is a sheriff ramon morales from the Me new mexico territory and he stands up to the you know evil power structure to these wealthy mine owners and he ends up losing his job and then eventually becoming a federal fugitive because he's trying to straighten this deal out now these Nanotech aliens have invaded Earth, and he can communicate with them, and they have stirred up all sorts of trouble. They have enticed the Russian Empire to attack America, and so there's all sorts of crazy stuff going on, and he has to help, you know, save the world. At the same time, he has a female sidekick, yes. His wife, uh, well, he meets her in the first novel, marries her at the end, I believe, a the Persian herbalist and healer, Fatame Karimi. <laughs> An interesting, an interesting match here, and she, you know, has fled her native land because she didn't like the arranged marriage that they were trying to put her up into. So they are kind of heroic couple that are, you know, trying to save the world. One more, one more, I can't not mention this one. It's another anime, and I'm not that familiar with it, but I'm sure a lot of you are. Trigon, Trigon. Uh, the anime from 1998, it became a animated film in 2010. I think they rebooted the series recently, but I didn't see it. Actually, I only saw one episode. 
And I was very confused, which is why I didn't continue. But, but after figuring it out, after checking out the references online, I understand it now, and it seems intriguing. The lead character, Vash the Stampede, is kind of the heroic cowboy loner character. And as far as I know, he is more of a loner. And uh, instead of being a bounty hunter, he's being pursued by bounty hunters. Uh, because, well, for one thing, he's a gunslinger. For another thing, he's accused of causing this disaster, which he barely remembers. He's got amnesia, so it's it's kind of a mystery to him, at least. And uh, he is heroic in that he will defend himself, but he tries not to kill the bounty hunters who are after him. And he also is called Trigun, not because he has three guns. And that was one of the things that confused me. No, he has three weapons. One is his actual gun. One is, I believe, a bionic arm which can be a weapon, and the third is his psychic powers. And so I guess it's very beloved, and it's weird when you think about you know, the way the Japanese view the American frontier. And still, it's worth checking out just for the fact that it's different. So there you have it. You have several examples of the cowboy protagonist in science fiction. It shows you that it's not necessarily all about superficial elements, like Galaxy said in their spoof. It's not just about, you know, reciting the uh, hackneyed idea of a gunfight and the idea that, uh, you know, the bad guys and the good guys and all that stuff. No, it's more about a particular type of hero who is at heart a loner, but he's usually teamed up with somebody that makes the story better because you have this kind of a a hero this kind of a person who drives the narrative that's my take on it please let me know what you think in the comments below give me other examples and please like and subscribe and check out my works on amazon now i have what is kind of a sci-fi western in there my steampunk novel fidelio's automata uh, so you might want to check that out, because it does take place in the Old West. For now, this is Steampunk Desperado saying, I do some egos from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future, and the present is extraordinary.